Okay, good morning. Last class we have started stresses in beam. So in the part of stresses in beam, we will discuss in this chapter two kind of stresses. One is the flexural stress and one is the horizontal shear stress in a beam or on a beam. So we discuss one of these that is the flexural stress in last class. So today we will be discussing the shear stress that is the horizontal shear stress. In the beginning, Similarly, like the previous class, we developed the stress equations. Like previous class, we developed that is sigma equals to m y by i. That is for the flexural stress. And by using this formula, we can calculate the flexural stress and we can draw the diagram of flexural stress. So today, we will be discussing about the horizontal sharing stress. So as you know, if you apply load, after application of load, always you have the you have a, a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So if due to the bending moment there is a, some stress development, so similarly due to the shear force there will be some stress also. And with respect to the cross section, the shear force is acting horizontally. So that's why we are considering the horizontally horizontal shear stress so suppose consider a member maybe it is similar like the pin support and roller support and having load if you take a section adjacent section suppose if you, you take a section one here and if you take another section two here which distance is dx which distance is dx so if you draw the moment diagram of this one, we know that the moment diagram would be like this. So if you consider this section and this section, so section 1 and section 2, what is the scenario? Section 1 is smaller than comparatively section 2. So because of moment is increasing, so in this point of view, if moment is increasing, stress is increasing. If stress is increasing, so forces all also will be increasing. So this is our consideration for the theory development. So, so what they are considering here, consider two adjacent sections, section 1 and section 2. Suppose you are considering section 1 and section 2 on this beam. Okay. So in a beam separated by the distance dx as shown in figure this and let the shaded part between them be isolated as a free body diagram so this one they just consider they just consider free body diagram here this shaded part they consider so now here you can see if you consider this area or if you consider up to this one so their stress diagram is looking like that you already understand in last class how to do the stress diagram so for a rectangular section if you consider the stress diagram is like that so this is in compression this is in tension so similarly if you consider the above the neutral axis you will have the stress diagram is like that and where the total stress or total force will be acting in a particular point on this diagram so if you consider this is h is the force horizontal force due to this moment is having this force on this object or in this cross section of the member this cross section so now here you can see there are two horizontal thrust one is h1 and this h2 so since we consider that section 1 moment is little bit larger than section sorry section 2 is little bit larger than the section 1 uh, moment so that means the thrust horizontal thrust or horizontal force will be the higher like h2 would be higher than h1 because we just consider dx distance here you can see that okay before the here you can uh, calculate if you have horizontal force right h1 is right side h2 is left side Please keep in mind, if H2 is higher, 
if h2 is higher and h1 is smaller there is some unbalanced situation right in this to cross, cross section there is the unbalanced situation right to make it balance what is the force needed you need another force which is acting opposite of h2 because h2 is little bit higher so if you consider a opposite force which is tau or which is df which is the resisting force shear force equals to zero so that time this section is balance condition because what is the amount of difference between the h2 minus h1 that would be the your df so this force is your df force do you understand or not this is from the equilibrium condition because as per our consideration we find that h2 is little bit higher than h1 so if you take the summation of horizontal forces so we find h2 is higher and h1 is less so this member should go this way right this member should move left or side but it is not because in the balancing conditions it has resisting additional resisting force which is df so now i can say df equals to h2 minus h1 can i say like that so this is the situation here we get so this is the literature they explain here so if you take the summation of horizontal you get df equals to h2 minus h1 so we understand how df equals to h2 minus h1 so this is actually suffix of 2 uh, this is suffix of 1 uh, suffix of like this. so now we know h2 is the force so what do we know sigma equals to force over area right so if we want to write f equals to we can say e stress into area so since we consider a small segment so that's why you are considering the sigma da right sigma da so since we consider this one is for the segment 2 that's why you consider this is sigma 2 da it should be like sigma 2 da for the segment we consider it should be sigma 1 da okay so here you can see for this segment we consider da but we want to know for the whole segment so that's why we just do the integration so if you consider this is a segment 1 this is the segment 2 or section 2 so we consider this section is having a stress sigma 1 and this section is having a stress is sigma 2. So we can convert this equals to H1 and this equals to H2. Because force equals to stress into area. Okay. So now if you just take the integration of this. Now if you consider the integration of this condition because we consider this part. So this is we can easily understand so this limit will be our what area okay so we can consider y1 to c this one is little bit tricky here i should explain you so why this integration limit is y1 to c here you can see that this is your y1 right so you are considering this is the fiber so this is the fiber you are considering right and above the fiber the area you need to consider easily okay so above the fiber what is your area this area right so you consider fiber is y1 so above the area you need to consider so this is actually your considered distance you should consider the limit our lower limit should be y1 for this one right and upper limit is the c which fiber you will consider above the fiber all the area you need to consider for stress calculation so now can you go fast yes sir sir from the side their beam left side and right side we take portion dx and right side sir 
y1 and sir y2 no, sorry y1 sir y sir uh, how we take their portion sir in this part this one yes sir so you consider this fiber of considering the horizontal shear stress so once you consider this fiber this distance you consider y1 and centered of this one you consider y Do you understand? You may consider this is another fiber also, no problem. So that time it would be Y1 and centroid of this total area would be your Y because moment arm would be your centroid. This is the initially you just consider the assumptions like okay, I want to find out the horizontal stress on this fiber, right? In problem, we will specify, okay, this is the, find the, uh, what is called, horizontal stress on this particular fiber. So, that time you will find the value of Y1 particularly. I may say, okay, consider the value of Y1 uh, 20 millimeter away from the neutral axis. So, that time, this Y1 would be 20 millimeter. So, in problem, it would be given. Okay, so if you have this 20 millimeter, you know the C, maybe C is 100. So that means what? This is your AT, right? This is your AT. So where will be your CG? So that would be your 40, right? So Y would be 40 plus 20, 60, capital Y, or this Y, right? This is 40 because in the CG point, and this is 20, Y1 is 20. So 40 plus 20 uh, would be 60. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so what I was telling you, you should understand here the limit. If you consider this is Y1 fiber, so this is the considered area of area. Okay. So how do you consider this area? Either you can say B into your, uh, what is called, C, right? So it's up to you. You can consider the area, or you can do the integration. But in actual scenario, we'll just consider the area. Okay. So now you just find the integration of this. So you'll get the total H2 and H1 from force to stress into area. So if you do the integration of the total portion, so you'll get the total stress on this particular portion. So now we know in the last class that sigma we eat in terms of moment. Sigma equals to what? Sigma equals to my by i. Okay, so we know sigma equals to my by i. So since we have a formula here, sigma equals to uh, sorry, force equals to df equals to sigma 2 into dA, right? So, in case of sigma 2, we can consider M2 Y by I, right? So, I can say that in terms of sigma is M2 Y by I, right? Can I say? And in case of sigma 1 equals to m1 y by i can i write instead of sigma okay so if you if we can write this one we can replace here so m2 actually this is m2 y i and this is the condition y we considered inside an integration of area similar right minus m1 by i y into the integration of area so from here you can see this is a common term we can take common and finally we find that m2 minus m1 by i so once you can find up to this so from here these informations we can say that the df equals to this should be tau if it is a shear stress this should be tau bdx right so another formula we can write since it is the horizontal force 
so we can say tau into da right so in terms of da we can say this is b into dx this is the area later we can set out into b dx is our area okay so finally we can say df equals to this share force equals to tau b dx so once you get this df equals to tau b dx so your target is to find out the maybe tau here so we can say that so instead of this can I write here it is tau b dx instead of df can I write this is tau b dx yes sir yes sir okay so if I can write so I can say that tau equals to so this m2 minus m1 can I write dm differentiation or difference so this m2 minus m1 we can write d and this portion I can transfer here we already have I okay you keep I here and we transfer B and DX here and integration of Y1 to C Y DA so now we finally get this tau equals to DM by I B DX integration of YDA so this is the same thing we have here okay so tau equals to dm by IB dx this one so we know that dm by dx can be written as a shear force because if you consider the differentiation of moment what do you get it from the chapter 4 we prove if you do the differentiation of moment we get the shear force right so similarly we can say dm by dx equals to v so if dm by dx equals to v so we find v by iv integration of y da we can either do the integration of y into da or we can do y uh, d uh, sorry v by iv into area and the y bar so what is the area area of the total portion that we consider Suppose you consider the fiber from this neutral axis, you consider this is the fiber y1. So area would be this total portion above the above the considered fiber. You consider this is the considered fiber y1. So area would be total of this area. Okay, this is your area. And y bar would be this from the neutral axis to the center of this area so this two inf information is very important area should be this one total area above the considered fiber and this y bar is the centroid distance from the neutral axis of the considered area so that's why we can consider this is the moment arm right and this is the static moment arm because area into the y bar so this gives you the static moment arm so we call it q so the formula comes finally tau equals to v y i small v into q and this q means what area into y bar so this is actually the derivation of tau equals to v y i v into q so this is the derivation of horizontal sharing stress okay so first of all you can see that in case of sharing stress we already developed the formula which is tau equals to vq by iv but here they wrote instead of b they wrote t so they consider b equals to t here that is the difference on these slides and shortcut of this maximum uh, share stress calculation we can calculate with using this formula which is 1.5 into v by a this is the regular formula tau equals to v q y i v or it is up to you we can use any so we can also say 
you can by using this formula you can also may find the maximum or we can say if it is the maximum locations we are calculating you can say 1.5 okay which is v by a okay so we are considering like this because while you consider the maximum that means what we are considering the neutral axis because y1 is zero here right but y var would be maximum here so that's why we consider this is the maximum locations of neutral axis so we will look into this okay so if you understand the formula now we can do some problem it's easy so determine the maximum shear stress in beam ab okay so this is the beam ab at 1 meter from the support have a look now they are saying like before i said sometimes i can mention the distance that where you want to calculate the stresses or they might say normally the maximum both the things can happen in last class i discussed so now they want to calculate one meter from support a so from support a after one meter they want to calculate this what maximum share is stress and draw the stress distribution over the cross section at every 25 mm interval oh this is interesting have a look you have this is the cross section of the member so what is this if you consider this the neutral axis how much is the distance 100 millimeter right so what they want they want to you calculate each 25 millimeter intervals suppose this is the first 25 intervals right this is 50 another 25 this is 75 and this is 100 so first of all you you calculate for 100 and you draw you get a value of tau right then you calculate for the 75 and you can consider this tau 100 and you get a value of tau 75 right you can calculate for 50 so you can consider this value is tau 50 you can calculate for 25 so you can consider this will is tau 25 and finally you can get the value of 0 while in the neutral axis or we can consider in the neutral axis so you can get the value of tau max because as you come close to the neutral axis you are getting more stresses in terms of horizontal okay so horizontal stress is higher in what or where neutral axis because you know the formula uh, v by i v uh, into q so q is the area into y bar right so have a look if you consider this is the neutral axis so for neutral axis considerations your area and y bar is maximum if you consider this is the uh, y bar sorry this is the neutral axis is the considered fiber so you find this is your total area right and your y bar is this so your q value is maximum when you consider the fiber at neutral axis if you consider fiber at 75 mm uh, 75 mm distance so that time what is your q this is 75 right so that time you considered area is this this is 75 you consider so what is your area who can tell me this is 60 right so this would be 25 so this a would be 60 into uh, 25 and what would be y bar hmm? y bar would be 75 plus half of 25 right so y bar would be 75 plus half of 25 so you see area is very small so that time you get less value of q so gradually if you increase that time you are having more area 
So since the array is increasing, you will get more Q. So that's why you are getting what? You are getting more value as you are going to the neutral axis. So you can see this is the integration of y a. So indirectly this value of y would be like what is called integration. So it would be like y square second degree. So that's why the graph would be parabolic. Even if you uh, wish you can consider each distance uh, each individual distance what is called tau. So that time you will find the graph is look like parabolic. So here you can see that the stress look like parabolic. So if you consider the cross section and if you calculate the stress on individual fiber as I said, so you will find the stress diagram is look like this. It would be look like this. So this is the stress on the 100 because 0 no area if you consider this top fiber if you consider this top fiber above it is there any area no area so that's why q would be, q would be zero so that's why this value zero so at 75 you have this area so with respect to this area and y bar you will get this tau so maybe you get little bit more and at at 50 maybe you get little bit more at 25 you get little bit more right at 0 you get extra you get more this way it repeats so in the last lecture we considered that modulus of elasticity in compression zone and tension zone are same so we'll have the same amount of stress or forces in the compression and tension with respect to the distance from the neutral axis. So from 25, this 25 distance and this same, this way you can get the same or similar pattern. So this is from the tension zone, compression zone, this is for the tension zone. Okay, so if you understand this part, now problem is easy. So first of all, as, as prescribed, you need to calculate the uh, SFD and BMD. So you don't need the BMD here, you just simply draw the SFD, that is good enough because you are going to calculate the tau where you need V only, PYIV into Q, right? So you need the shear force only, so you don't have to draw this one, it's unnecessary, you can draw even. So which locations you need to calculate this V? Do you remember? One meter from support A. So you draw the diagram and you need to calculate the shear force from 1 meter away from support A. So you find here at A this is the maximum shear force locations but they don't want to calculate the shear stresses here. They want to calculate the shear stresses at 1 meter away from support A. So you need to calculate the shear, stress, shear force on this particular one meter away so how much it is so you can again find it by using a similar triangle so they found it is five so v is okay calculation of b is understandable so once you calculate v is okay then we go for ib sorry not ib i moment of inertia so i equals to vh cube by 12 so you know the B and you know the H. So you just put the value. B equals to 60. H is 200 millimeter. And divided by 12. So then you got this value in millimeter to the power 4. Okay. So now you can calculate the area. So this one is for the fiber. While you consider 70 mm. You consider 70 mm. So I can say this is tau 70 Oh, why I am repeating the mistake? 75, right? 75 mm. So, this distance is 75. So, now you put the formula. Tau equals to VAY 
if you can write it a y bar it will be more convenient for you a y bar by i t or you can consider i b this is up to you so you put the value 5 kilo newton it was so you, you convert into the uh, kilo newton to newton by multiplying 1000 and this is the area it is in millimeter square and this is the y bar so now question is that sir how did this y bar is 87.5 so have a look up to this is 75 right and as we know y bar would be cg of this area right so this this distance would be 25 by 2 so 25 by 2 would be 12 point what 12.5 so, 75 plus 25 by 2 is 87.5. Do you understand that? So, in this particular problem, if you understand which one would be your area and which one would be your y bar, everything is easy for you. And then rest of the things is just calculation. So now you put the information here and you find this is 0.273 Newton per millimeter square. <clears throat> Where while you consider the fiber at the distance of 75 mm from the neutral axis. And for B sir, I am not sir clear sir. Please can you say Okay. Me? So V you have to calculate 1 meter away from A. So here you find this is 10. So this is total is 2 so you can use the similar triangular formula right this value is 10 total distance is 2 and this is 1 meter but you don't know this one so you can use the similar triangle formula if you consider this is x so you can easily calculate the x and now question might be like that sir why do you consider 1 meter away because the researchers or the question givers wants to know 1 meter away if I do not mention anything, so you have to consider the maximum shear stress location. So this is the maximum shear stress location. Okay. So now they said we need to calculate each 25 mm interval. So 0, 25, 7, 50, 75, 100 like this. Okay. So here they did not consider the 100. But I can give you idea. For 100 tau, it would be 0. Right? Why 0? You should ask me. Because if you consider this is the fiber. So, is there any area above this 100? No area. So, since no area, area would be 0. So, if you put area 0, so this total term would be 0. That's why tau 100 is 0. So, now if you consider the 75, then you can consider the 50, 25 intervals. So, this value would be. 50 okay so your area and y bar will be only changing others v i t will be remain same because this is the same section right similar cross section so now you can see v is same i is same t is also same only change the area so area would be here this portion so 60 into this this is how much very good that would be 50 total is 100 so your area would be 60 into 50 if it is 50 so rest of the things would be 50 because total is 100 from the neutral axis so area we find 60 into 50 so we get area now the question is y1 so we know this is 50 right from the neutral axis this is 50 plus Top portion is also 50, but where would be the CG? Half of it, this is the rectangular. Yes, sir. Half of it would be, top one is 50 also, 50 divided by 2, so it would be 75. So, as the area increased, so there we will get little bit of increment in the value of tau 2. So, they name it tau 2, but I prefer to name like tau 50. Why 50? Because it is in the 50 mm distance of fiber 
from the neutral axis okay so similarly you can calculate the tau 25 which is 25 mm distance from the neutral axis of the fiber okay so now this would be your area so what would be this dimension 75 75 and this one uh, 25. 25 very good so this would be 25 and this would be 75 so area would be 16 to 75 so then you can consider the y bar so y bar equals to 100 okay you don't need to do like this way you can consider like your own way so from here you have to go this so this is 25 plus 75 by 2 so you'll get 62.5 so once you get a and sir, y bar uh, yes so is it ma mandatory to uh, draw every figure uh, beside the solution this is not mandatory but but honestly speaking if you draw this one it might take few seconds just to draw randomly right you don't have to use the scale and pencil properly you just draw the random way freehand drawing but it will save your problem not to go wrong direction just think you do not have this picture how do you calculate your a and y bar you understand yes sir. so better you just draw the relevant one so simply you could just consider okay this is the fiber you consider it's up to you if you can do without drawing and if you do one mistakes you will get zero but if you do drawing and if you get suppose why were only mistakes so that means okay it's understandable why do you why why did you do the mistakes it should be relevant to your drawing right so that time even though you have the error i may consider you more mark because error is from the drawing not from your understanding do you understand but if you do mistakes without drawing so that time i'll say okay you try to copy it or okay you don't know how to calculate it anyway so this is the different discussion so now you consider the neutral axis so it would be tau max where you have to consider this is your fiber so that time you have to consider the cg point from the neutral axis so simply your cg point would be totally 100 right Hundred by two, that would be your CG point. Okay, and what is your area? Sixty, and this is your hundred. So, your total considered area will be sixteen to hundred. So, have a look. Area is increased a lot. If you multiply this again, you get more values. So, finally, you get four calculated values, and one is here. I I just gave you, which is zero. So now, if you try to draw the diagram. This is the neutral axis, right? This one. So this one is the neutral axis. That means what? This is the maximum value point. So how much you get it? 0 0.6259. to 5, 9. So according to this equal, you draw it. Then at 25, this is the distance. 25. So how much you get it? 25. 0.586. So you can you put the 0.586 okay and in case of 50 you get how much 0.469 so you put 0.469 here right in 75 how much 0.273 so you put 0.273 here okay and for this top fiber, what is the value? Now without calculating, we can say this is zero. Because above the top fiber, there is no considered area. So this is zero. So now you just connect this line. You try to follow the parabolic one. Even if you take more close values, 
it will find this shape is like that and it would be a repeat the similar in the other other portion okay if we calculate for the 10 this shape, this the this shape is for the udl not udl there is nothing called udl and uvl this is the value you get from the uh, what is called stress so this is stress develop either udl point load moment right it doesn't matter this shape is according to the stress because you are doing the integration of yda okay so if you put the value of y from this neutral axis and da you will get this change the line of action will be like this so there is no connection with respect to what kind of load is applied okay because in case of flexural stress we find the linear right in the flexural stress we find the linear because that was first degree it was only depend on y but here it is the integration of y so have a look this one can be calculated in shortcut way because we know at neutral axis is the maximum what stress locations so it can be calculated 1.5 into v by a this uh, this one we can calculate this another way have a look what is the maximum shear force 10 right maximum shear force is yes, 10 so you consider this is the 10 and divided by the area so what is the area hmm? this area 16 to 200 so we can follow this one for calculating the maximum now you might think sir for flexural stress we find the diagram for maybe suppose this is the rectangular one so for this one for flexural stress you find the diagram is like that right and for shear stress yes, you find the diagram like this right so what you can conclude from this you can conclude that for the flexural stress the top edges or the edges are taking the most of the resistance or most of the load in terms of the bending moment okay or flexural stress but where is stress in the middle or neutral axis in terms of flexural stress is zero so indirectly you can say for a particular cross section of a beam if you want to carry more moment you should have more cross sectional area on the edges okay but the question is that if you find this kind of scenario so can i decide that okay i will only have the cross section area on the edges right because these portions are going to take most of the moment so that time if i consider w shape or this kind of uh, flange and web beam so it might serve our purpose so most of the cases in steel case you'll find steel member are having the flange with the web with a very minimum uh, thickness of web because we know most of the moment momentum stress is carried by the flanges area as we can see most of the moment is carried by the edges fiber right so this kind of section might be economical for moment resisting now question is that sir why still you need this one because we can see that in the neutral axis the horizontal shear stress is the maximum so that's why we need at least something to resist the horizontal shear stress okay so if you give a little bit of thickness of web which will be able to what carry the horizontal shear stress or shear is thrust so comparative to the moment stress horizontal stress is very low so that's why you'll find very thin uh, thickness of wave is attached in a cross section like a uh, 
W shape cross section of beam or sometimes you might find T shape also. So now if I say where is the uh, maximum moment in terms of laxerly stress and horizontal sharing stress. Can you explain? And if I say why? So this kind of theoretical comparison, this kind of theoretical comparison or maybe after solving the problem I may add some theoretical comparison which needs you to understand the theory. So here we will uh, discuss this uh, kind of W shape beam. So determine the shear stress distribution over the cross section okay at a b c d so they considered the cross section at a you take a cross section point a b <coughs> c so c means here actually and d d is in the neutral axis okay shown in figure and given given v or shear force is 25 kilo newton so actually usually you might have some sort of load you should you might have some sort of load on a beam and the cross section of this beam is like that so instead of giving you the uh, force and the beam they directly give you the idea about the shear force that which shear force you need to consider so v is directly given which is 25 kilo newton and i is also directly given but for this kind of uh, this shape of beam you can get the I from the appendix of your book okay or maybe it would be given to you because this course is not uh, checking you the calculation of capacity of I calculation capacity of I prime this kind of calculation capacity is not the main intention here so that's why they will give you the basic informations which you have learned in the basic mechanics so V and I is directly given so we need to calculate the stress at point A that means the fiber you consider a fiber then you consider the fiber B then you consider fiber C then you consider fiber D this way so we know what is the formula of is horizontal stress tau equals to V Y IV into Q right so Q means A into y, pra, y bar so thickness of this flange is given 10 mm and width of this flange is given 102.1 and thickness of this wave is given 6.4 and height of this beam is given 260.4 so if you just reduce this 10 and this 10 20 what would be this distance 240.4 right yes sir okay so now consider the tau a so if you consider the tau a so where is this this one right so above this is there any area to consider no sir no area so we can say tau a will be zero because there is no considered area and now come to the portion b okay so if you consider this is the fiber so above this fiber what is the situation you have this area so you have this area right above this fiber so now what would be your area this distance is 102.1 and this distance is 10 so 100.21 into 10 right so that is your area and y bar y bar would be 50% of it from the neutral axis so this distance you know right and you can calculate yes, this or if you know the half of it 
if you know the total of it you just consider half so that would be this distance so if you simply reduce this distance you can get this y bar so they just follow this technique so this is 10 10 by 2 so total is 260.4 divided by 2 minus 10 by 2 so this is 125.2 do you understand this this one why how did they calculate this y bar yes sir, yes, sir. okay so once you know this one you know the v you calculate the a you know the y bar you know the i the t is a point here so t will be, t will be the thickness of this so how much this is 102.1 this is 102.1 do you understand this is your t or we call it b so now similarly you can do for fraction tc uh, tau c so for tau c this is the fiber keep in mind for tau c this is the fiber right so again if you consider this fiber same area and y bar you are getting because above but this the, the b is changed yes above this uh, c bar c axis or sorry c fiber the area remains same like the b but only change is t because the thickness is changed thickness is t is he this one while you consider b that time thickness was this thickness was this for the b the width but for c fiber thickness is this so you have the same area same y bar but only this t is changing so t is 6.4 you understand this is 6.4 yes so this is the b of c or width of b, c indirectly so now have a look due to this change of thickness the stress increase because this value is decrease this is stress increase so this is the basic difference up to this is clear yes sir okay yes. now we will consider the fiber d right then we will consider the fiber d yes sir. so in this d we have two situation either we can consider by combined way or we can consider this is segment 1 and this is segment 2. So since we do not want to waste our time on this combination, so we better we can do it the segment wise. So we consider A1 as the area of this one, right? Y bar 1 is the CG point distance from this neutral axis from here. So that would be our Y bar 1 and yes, Y bar y from this is this total is this total you can calculate right so then from that you can consider this is y2 y bar 2 so this way we can calculate so area 2 would be have a look 0 0.62 sorry 0 0.6 point 6.4 into this this height right and half of this height would be the cg of this a2 so this way you can calculate so the formula we can change the formula is like v y i t into a y bar right so since here area are more y bar are more so we can take the summation you did this kind of calculation in the basic mechanics also so it would be summation of a1 into y1 plus a2 into y2 plus a3 into y3 like this the summation of this yes, yes. multiplication plus this multiplication and finally you get this tau d and now the question is to draw the diagram now you come to the diagram so tau a you find zero you remember tau a you find zero because above this there is no area so this is the neutral axis for this uh, drawing or graph so this is the zero okay so while you consider the b fiber how much value you found 
0.718 so suppose according to the graph you select 0.718 then at C value at C graph point C how much you find while you consider the fiber C 12.458 so you can see 12.458 is the value for C fiber and in case of D 16.964 16.964 so these are the point actually you find from the calculation right now question how can you draw as we know this is the parabolic line we have to draw so from 0 to 0 0.78 we can use the we can use the parabola so from this point to this point is parabolic from this point to this point there is no options to draw in another, another line of action because this is in the same line right same line so you just need to connect this only and after that you can see that is the 16 12.458 to 16 so from here to here you consider this way so you got the first half or maybe the uh, diagram for the compression zone so similarly you can also select the value for the tension zone as we know that modulus of elasticity for compression and tension are equal so for tension zone for extreme fiber it would be zero right so it, you can consider this is a prime this is b prime this is c prime and this is d right just for an example so a prime is the same distance with respect to the a from the neutral axis value so b prime and b are having the same distance from the neutral axis and the width or t value is also same so that's why this value would be 7 point sorry 0 0.781 and in case of c prime it would be similar to the c so it is 12.458 and for d it is same so then you again connect like this so that is the diagram now question is that in exam you don't get shock if you find double flange beam so you can practice one assignment like with the before one with the double flange beam you make a double flange beam on this example and you do this assignment or do this practice and you keep previous uh, last flexural stress problem and this problem as an assignment i hope you can find i for this one separately right okay thank you very much